This is just pathetic. It's absolutely useless. These features are all fake. It's just sad. This is absurd. This is completely useless. Is this a toy for kids? This doesn't make any sense. I really didn't want to make this video, but I had to because a lot of people are getting scammed out there. And that's because whenever I search for AI tools for UX UI, I always find wizard at the top of the list. On Google, it's UX pilot and wizard. ChatGPT suggests wizard at the top and Gemini says wizard at the top of the list as well. Why is wizard dominating the market? It must be good, right? Well, I'm here to warn you, to help you save your time and your money. And yes, I'm spoiling the video to give you the answer right away. Wizard sucks. That's your answer. But if you want to see the proof and how it compares with UX Pilot, keep watching. We're going to have a laugh at how absurd the quality is. Hi, my name is Jad. I lead a community of product builders pushing the boundaries of AI. And today I want to talk about Wizard since it's constantly being placed at the top of search results. I made two videos about it about a year and a half ago and I didn't sugarcoat it, it was bad. But that's a long time considering how fast technology is improving. And I thought, surely Wizard has caught up with the competition. But no, a year and a half later, and it's still as bad as it was when it launched. They clearly did a great job with SEO and market placement, but the mismatch between marketing and the actual product is bothering me. How many people are paying for it just to realize that it's absolutely useless? And it's not just the UI quality that you're getting out of it that's bad. Even the UI for the tool itself is horrendous. The UI for a UI design tool is completely trash. The worst interface I've seen in my career. And why don't we start there? Let's start with the user interface and the usability. Now here's the interface. At a first glance, it makes you feel like this is a professional editing app with the tools on the left and the properties on the right and some canvas features at the top. But everything is not what it seems. These features are all fake. Anyway, the main thing for usability is how do you generate a screen? Well, you have to go through seven steps. Seven completely unnecessary clicks. Check this out. Okay, let's say I want to create a new screen. I'll click on the plus screen. Then I'll click generate with AI. And then it opens up a chat window for me. Then I have to now chat with it and read what it's saying. Let's select mobile. Then it says, okay, walk me through the detailed design you have in mind. Let's say journaling app. Now, it's going back and forth with a chat interface. High precision or creative exploration. I don't know what that means. I'll say creative. And there we go. It gave me four options. But now what do you do with these? Well, you have to add them to the canvas. It doesn't just add them to the canvas because I don't know why. <laughs> but you have to choose which one you want and then add it to the canvas. Okay. I added this one. Another way to generate a screen is even more annoying. You can click here on the chat interface and then you have options. I'll say generate screens and then it asks me what type of input. I mean, yes, type a description. That's a lot of decisions I'm having to make. This could have been a component that has all of these options that I can take off. I don't need it to be a chat interface. All of these steps just to be able to write the prompt. All right, let's compare it to UX Pilot because UX Pilot is my favorite tool right now. Here in UX Pilot, you have a very clean interface, even though it's packing way more features. So how do you generate a screen? You have a prompt box, you type your prompt, you select your options and you say generate, easy. And if you prefer a chat interface, it's also easy because it gives you all of the options to select here and then you can chat with it. And once you generate the screen, you get all of these options at the top here that you can execute. And then you have the side panel for more features like manual editing and the code. Now let's check the quality of the generated UI. And honestly, the UI quality coming out of Wizard is just sad. I thought for sure they would have improved over the past year, but no, they're still using the same boring components over and over again. I even had to pay for a monthly subscription to try the auto designer that they claim is top of the line AI model, but it's not even better than the free version of the app. So they don't let you try the auto designer 2 model in the free version and that's by design so that you pay for the monthly subscription hoping that it is better than the free model but it's not better and i don't use the word scam lightly but wizard is scamming people here's your proof i'm gonna give your ex-pilot and wizard the same prompt and 
you can compare for yourself. Something very basic, I said journaling app, dark theme, bold colors. And now in UX Pilot, I'm gonna paste the same prompt. And I'm not even gonna select deep design or max here, which will generate even better designs. Let's just stay with the basic. Okay, here's what wizard created. I have four options that do not look like anything I need for a journaling app. This is a social media app. And this is just, yeah, you can add text and there's a plus button. And then here I have a settings page. And here it's just something very, very basic. The icons are ugly. Everything is super basic. And back in UX Pilot, <laughs> check this out. Everything is clear and organized and separated properly. It has a lot of information, a lot of interaction. And it just looks more professional and more production ready. It seems like Wizard is only good for creating ideas, wireframes, like quickly mocking up ideas, but not your eye design. It's good for wireframing at best. And the moment you ask for something a little bit out of the box, like say a different style for the app, check this out again. I'm gonna click here and done for now. If I click here again to start a new page, generate screens, type a description, mobile. You have to go through this every time you want to generate a screen. This is absurd. I'm going to say journaling app, no more freak design. Let's see what this comes up with. I'm going to do the same in UX pilot. There you go. Again, all of the same basic designs. I cannot get it to generate anything different than the basic components that it has, no matter how much you prompt it. Back in UX Pilot, and there you go. This is the pneumorphic design in UX Pilot. So it is able to create something completely unique and with any style that you want. Let's try Cyberpunk style. And again, Wizard is completely useless giving me all of the same components all over again. And this one is just beautiful. And here's what your X pilot generated. You can give it any style you want and it will generate it with the code and with the usability and with the interactions. But wizard is just nothing close. You can also notice a difference in the quality of the UI design that's generated just by trying to manually edit it. Because here in Wizard, if you want to edit this, each element on the screen is completely independent. There is no hierarchy and no flow, no layout structure. You can literally just move anything anywhere and there's no layout tools and properties. If you go into, into the design tab here, all you can do is align and change colors and corners and shadow. There's no layout tools. There's no auto layout, there's no positioning. This is completely useless for manual editing. No designer can edit a UI with this type of manual editing. And on the other hand, with UX Pilot, you can go to manual editing. And here you can see that you have the properties on the side and all the elements are structured within a layout. So if you want to move this, for example, the layout will adjust and it will go here and you can move the whole thing together. You can put it here. You can edit your design however you want. You can add padding and margins. You can put a margin of 40 here. I mean, you can edit this manually all while respecting the layout properties and the structure. And with your XPilot, you can go even further by copying the design to Figma and it will give you a design that is completely editable in Figma with auto layout and everything that you need. All right, that brings us to the features. We established that there's a lot of features missing, but what does it have? Well, it has a button that will change the style of the design into a wireframe, a sketch. But I mean, is this a toy for kids or what? This doesn't make any sense. Why would you want to see your design in a sketch style? That's all it does. Whoever created this doesn't understand the point of wireframes. You sketch to come up with quick ideas. But when you have a high fidelity UI, you don't need a sketch. This is just pathetic. Using the sketch style just for aesthetics, even the tools you have here on the side are all fake. It doesn't give you the option to design your own elements and it's not compatible with Figma to design your own elements. So all you can do here is drag these pre-designed basic elements or components and then modify the size and that's it. 
Of course, in contrast, we have UX Pilot with all of these great features like I already showed you manual editing and you can copy to Figma. UX Pilot also has a plugin for Figma so that you can have even more features while you're working on your design inside of Figma. So it adds your AI features to your workspace in Figma. And you can also generate flows in UX Pilot. It will stay consistent across screens. You can even train it on your own design system so it generates a UI based on your design system, which is beautiful. And it keeps getting better. The team at UX Pilot is always listening to feedback and improving the functionality and the usability. I mean, even if you want to have an app that does not have full editing capability, you need to have compatibility with Figma so you can have full editing capability. I think the team at Wizard is expecting us to work completely isolated inside of the interface without good editing features. And the only way you can export your work is by exporting an image, a PNG or a PDF. And that's it. You cannot even export the code. If you select a page and you go to export, this is the code you get. You get a snippet of React code and it's one line of CSS and that's it. And if you select multiple items like a component, it will say, no, you can only select one component to export. So it does not give you the code as compared to your UX Pilot where it will give you the full source code of the page. You can copy this code from your UX Pilot and build it anywhere and it will look exactly the same. So no code export, no Figma compatibility. All you can do is export images. Who's going to use this? So yeah, I don't know who this tool is for. At best, it's a tool to quickly mock up wireframes. That's it. Just like MS Paint is good for wireframing. This is good for wireframing and definitely not worth $20 per month for this subscription. And I can tell you for sure that it has not improved in the past year and a half. So don't expect it to get better in the future. This is it. Wizard is scamming people. Spread the word.